Well, I was the uh, poster boy online nerd. I literally played in my mom's basement for what it's <laughs> worth. And I also need more of a tan. So you, you got the tan covered. I, I'm envious I of the tan. Okay, I need I a little more uh, real life. Um, Get outside, you know. jungle. What's up, everybody? I managed to get Josh Aria on a podcast. I know he's not a, a big podcaster, but he's uh, one of the. Uh, he's been around in the poker world for a long time, and he's won at kind of a lot of things. Actually, is uh, one is it twelve million over uh, in tournament winnings? Is that right? Um, it was six bracelets. Yeah, it, I I haven't looked. It's it's over ten. I, I know that, and and You're I like, know oh, it's, no, Who cares about the other two million? It, and it's, it's, it, yeah, it's less than Sean Deeb right now, so uh, I'm well, out here. You know. I'm out here trying to catch Sean Deeb again. All right, well, I really hope you catch Sean Deeb because that would be great. I know you won up Phil <laughs> Hummy within uh, the 2019 Player of the Year. Uh, Sean yeah. Deeb should be next on the list yeah. as well. Yeah, I like uh, me and Sean have a lot of fun with each other. He's a good buddy of mine, and uh, when and we like we we uh, seesawed for a while. Like I'd pass him, and then he'd pass me, and and uh, like I won I won my sixth bracelet, and he couldn't take it. And the next day, he won his sixth, and uh, <laughs> so it's uh, it's it's a cool. He he's a really good um, pace setter. Uh, he's. He's one of the really? best in the world, and oh. he's one of the best in the world. And and to to be able to try, you know, it, it's extra motivation to not have to listen to his shit talking to uh, <laughs> to you know to to keep winning. So I just right, well, well, I want to keep up. We got a few things to talk about. First of all, we got to talk about taking down Sean D while making him go down in size, literally taking him down multiple different ways. Yeah. Uh, on the poker world, and in pant sizes also, uh, simultaneously, a weird combination effect. Um, I'm, I'm in for that. I'm in for taking him down the, the ethical way, of course. Um, I, uh, you know, I didn't even finish my intro. You're also a man of the people, I understand, running uh, PokerStake.com, I believe it's called. And um, yeah. it's meant to help a lot of the... Uh, lower and uh, middling str- uh, poker players who are struggling yeah. a bit and to help them uh, get into situations where they can uh, be comfortable in playing games and sell their action, which I want to talk about too because that's uh, cool because there's a few positives there that I think have a longer lasting and bigger effect than people think. So not only are you actually like a hidden crusher of sorts, uh, you've been basically crushing for a while and people don't really know about it that much that aren't that aren't uh really in the scene i mean you also played you also were it sounds like you're doing really well on, online too i didn't know that you played 70 hours a week at one point you're a little you had a, a few phases you were a grinder <laughs> as well 70 yeah, hours a week online, man online was never <laughs> my thing there was uh oh. there was times there was times like stretches when the plo games were really good on certain sites and i would wake up and and roll over and look and see who's playing. And, but for the most part, I mean, other than a few stretches, I was the sucker. I mean, I was definitely the sucker online and, um, it online doesn't fit, you know, my, um, strong, like, uh, the things that I'm good at are, are, are more translate much better to live poker. But I did decent back in the day, but nothing great, nothing like you. Oh, okay, well, I was the uh, I was uh, you know the poster boy, uh, poster boy online nerd. I literally played in my mom's basement for what it's <laughs> worth, and I also needed more of a tan. So you you got the tan covered. I, I'm envious I of the tan. Okay, I need I a little more uh, real life. Um, Get outside, like, uh, jungle. Stuff. Yeah, I'm get. It's gonna happen, okay? It's ha- I, I promise. I'll, I'll go outside and see some sunlight. Let me. Okay, let me like, uh, play some more. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> so, uh, well, what would you say that your strengths are that are more suited to live poker? Because I think that there's a lot of poker players 
out there that don't really like to grind online. And, you know, frankly, I don't really advise online for a lot of poker players as well um, that want to find success in this area. So why don't you talk about that? Like, what are, what are some of the things that have yeah. made you so successful live and in the World Series of Poker? Um, I, I think I understand and, and have a really good feel for game flow. And I have a good uh, feel for what certain people are trying to accomplish. Um, I, I'm able to get into people's heads more. Um, and I, I just, the flow of poker feels so much more right in a live uh, arena rather than, you know, clicking buttons. And you, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's mainly game flow and understanding and, and um, perception, uh, you know, getting uh, understanding my opponents, what they're trying to accomplish much more than I'm able to do online. Whereas when I'm playing online, everybody's just a screen name, you know, whereas when I sit down at a live table, I'm able to, you know, take a good quick glance around and be like, okay, this guy wants to win today. This guy is trying to get knocked out because he's going to the club later. You know, this person is just filling a seat. He's trying to cash because he's not doing good. And uh, I just, I don't know. I'm able to create these storylines in my head that translate, you know, that have translated pretty well into results uh, here in the past few years. So perhaps you have more people skills and you have more reads on people. Definitely. And you can kind of like know what they're feeling kind of thing. Right. Based off of like, you know, the language and their, their... Yeah, just their, yeah, their body language, the way they're playing, um, you know, just looking at them. Are they irritated to be there? Are they, are they trying to cash? Are they fully engaged? And, and, and that's another thing. Like I'm able to fully engage at a live table. At playing online, I am far from that. I'm watching TV. I've got the remote in one hand. I've got my phone in the other hand. Uh, I've got a browser open, and I'm looking through Amazon and I, and scrolling Twitter. And I'm not doing any of that playing live. I'm just like because it's interesting and, and have conversations with people. And and you know, you might pick something up. Anything you know, any information is. You know, all the information's free. And so if I, at home, I'm not getting any of that information. And, and but at a live table, um, I just try to absorb as much as I can and stay fully mm -hmm. engaged and see mm -hmm. what happens. Um, I, I have a question. I'm a bit curious. Would you say you're a naturally more social person? Um, no, not really. It just depends. Mm -hmm. It's really weird. It's... Uh, when I'm in my comfort zone, I can be very social, but then there's times where I'm not social. So it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I would consider myself more introverted than extroverted. Okay, what about an observational one? I, I don't understand what that is. Like someone who uh, is people watching a lot, someone who like pays attention to details. Oh yeah, that kind of it's, thing. I'm very conscious of my surroundings and. I'm very conscious of everything that's happening around me. And I think I pick up on little things that, that normal people would just look and think that it's nothing where I'll create this full storyline by just by somebody giving me side eye. And I'll have this, I could give you a full story on, on the reason that they gave me side eye. And so, yeah, yeah really. I, I'm definitely very observational. Oh, okay, okay. That makes a lot of sense because I, um, I myself am not very observational. That's in fact a bit of my weakness. I'm a little bit stuck in my head uh, sometimes. I mean, I wish I had that skill, frankly, but uh, that could make sense of why, you know, you really, uh, you know, live poker really appeals to you and maybe people with more, and I've been starting to notice this trend a little bit as people with more observational skills seem to be um, really tuned in to what's going on in the live poker room and maybe pick up more on live tells and, more yeah, like I, reads and that sort of thing. Um, I uh, yeah, apparently you had a. I read something else. I want to confirm. Apparently you had a bad boy demeanor. You were like shit talking a little bit back in the day, or is that still going on? Or is this I mean, a Sean Deep thing? No, I mean I still have that fire. I mean, all that roots from 
a 29 year old that's never had any money to where I'm playing for life changing money. I mean, first place is five and a half million. And I don't know. I just, you know, I've always been very competitive and I've always, I, you know, when the juices get flowing, I run my mouth a little too much (laughs) and I still do it um, to this day. But I, I, I try to be respectful as much as possible, but there are going to be times when the juices get flowing and uh, I'll feel myself a little more than I should. And uh, I'll, I'll get out of line here and there, but it, it was never meant to hurt anybody, but dude, poker's war. I mean, we're playing poker. You play incredibly high limits and you're playing for, life-changing money every day so you know what it feels i mean it's like there's no holds barred i mean it's i don't know i i I don't there there's lines that i don't cross like like the will kasuf guy or there's been a few people that come along the way that that i feel like cross that um uh line of morality whatever that is but i don't know i'm a competitor and sometimes bad shit comes out of my mouth and I have to apologize for it later. But, uh, you know, it's me, it's me. It's the fire that burns inside. And, and I have to use, I'm not as smart as all these guys playing. I don't, I don't play every hand technically correct, like all everybody else. And, and so I have to use what I have. I mean, I'm a kid from the street. I grew up in a pool hall. I have no college education and I've, uh, I just do what I can, and it's sometimes it works, and sometimes it looks really bad. Well, uh, it sounds like you have some more, um, you know, intelligence in different kind of ways. I mean, I think you must mean in terms of book smarts, yeah, or that kind of thing. Yeah, um, I, I do. Mean, I feel I feel like I'm uh, emotionally smart, and um, I do. Yeah, I do. I, I I understand my emotions, and I'm able to to translate them well, and I'm able to deal with them well, and. For the most part, yeah. Well, um, you know, uh, research suggests that, you know, emotional intelligence and social intelligence, I know emotional intelligence especially, um, is more relevant to success than uh, sheer intelligence, that's for sure, by like quite a mile. It's a bit of a surprising thing. And in fact, uh, having too much intelligence, having too much of a a number of things can be quite bad. Um, if you've ever read uh, Daniel Kahneman's book, he's got a book literally called Emotional Intelligence, Social Intelligence as well. Matter of fact, maybe I should reread them. Um, but they talk about this. I mean, there's various experiments like there's, you know, there's a marshmallow experiment where they test a bunch of kids to see if they can, you know, deprive the marshmallow or hide their eyes from the marshmallow. And if the ones that hid their eyes from the marshmallow uh, did much better in life than the ones that... Uh, did not. That's interesting. Um, do you think you could hide your eyes from uh, the marshmallow? I mean, I mean, I know that you've been uh, that Sean Deeb inspired you to lose weight. I read that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I, I've I'm on this little journey right now where, uh, you know, Sean was gracious enough to give me a piece of a free roll of the bet that he has, or uh, a, a free roll, not really, a, but a piece of his bet with uh, with with Bill. And, but I have to get to 17% body fat as well. And I, yeah, yeah it's, it's fun. It's, it's, um, yeah, I, I have, it's fun. Uh, it's fun <laughs> looking in the mirror and seeing muscles that like for the first time. And it's like, I'm always like flexing and Rachel makes fun of me all the time because it's like, I'll come in the room and be like, babe, look, we have a new muscle. And it's like, I mean, cause I've always been like chubby and, and, and overweight and, never worked out my whole life. And yeah, it is. It's, it is fun. I I, I like it. It's fun putting clothes on that actually like fit and I'm not wearing like squeezing into 36 inch waist and, and going down. Yeah, it is. I I'm having fun with it. It's, it is fun. Well, I'm glad you're having fun with it. Uh, I never thought losing weight was a whole lot of fun, but I will say that uh, for my own personal experience, when you get start getting into like very good shape, and all that, um, it's a uh, start. A different kind of candy happens. You start to look, yeah. look at the, in the mirror. Of yeah, it's rewarding. It's definitely rewarding. 
Uh, all right. Well, let's root for uh, both of you and Sean Deeb to thin up, but also uh, it'd be funny to like, it'd be funny to like find a way to have you supersede Tom, supersede Sean in uh, the mixed games. Cause uh, I think Sean's a little bit too cocky or the, the poker somehow. I don't know what would be. He's good, man. Uh, he's good. But he's like, and I, I don't, is he? Um, yeah, Sean is good. He's, I love getting, it's such, I don't know if honor is, it's such an advantage that I have to, to get to hear Sean talk about hands because he looks at poker at a way that I've never looked at it before. And it all makes sense. And, and so like, if I, if I do, you know, when, 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 in the end, Sean is a thousand percent going to have more career earnings than me. It's I'm a thousand percent sure of that. Um, but in the meantime, when I'm you know playing some, it, it's cool laddering with him. You know, me passing him once in a while. Um, but I don't look at it as success against him. It's almost like success with him because a lot of my improvements in poker over the past few years are getting to talk with people like Sean and people like Matt Glantz and people like Dan Weinman. Well, um, look, uh, if you value my opinion and you want to talk with me, I mean, I think, you know, I, uh, I think I'm better. No, than I definitely do. No, you're definitely, you're, you're one of the best players in the world. And it's the, you know, I, I remember battling with you in the first PPC that, no, you can when when I came in second in the PPC, you came in fourth or fifth, and we battled a bunch. And then in the one that you won, um, or not you, I think the Macho Man won. Um, no, 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 uh, I, Go, uh, you, uh, Goku won, or I think that was me. I think that was me, and then Macho Man won the lot in the next one. Yeah, so yeah, involved, okay, so yeah. <laughs> But when you were, but when you were the Macho Man, you were on my direct left for all of day one and i mean it's it's just a nightmare it's uh i I, it's it was not fun there was uh there was one crazy hand between me you and uh julian mart julian martini where he bluffed the river or something and I, i don't know but yeah it was it was it's it's a pleasure watching you work man you're you're uh Def, very talented and definitely one of the best in the world. Oh yeah, thank you. I wasn't. I wasn't. Uh, to be honest, the aim was not to toot my own horn. Uh, but I was. It was to like um, talk a little bit shit in Sean Deeb's direction because he's quite a oh, yeah. guy. I'm trying yeah, to like, he is. He's. Yeah, uh, it's. I didn't like. I like the, you know, I like the it, other guys you mentioned. I I like I like mean Sean Deeb. Like it's it's <laughs> it's, it's it's like a warm. I, I don't know. It's just. And then he was on this kick where he was like nice Sean Deeb for about two or three months. And, That's uh, so weird. But yeah, it's also and, good. It's cute. <laughs> no, it's not. It's so – it's such bullshit. And, what? and me and Glantz <laughs> – me and Glantz make fun of him and it's like we would tell him we want mean Sean Deeb back. And uh, so, But I think mean Sean is back. Actually, he called me last night like – just seeing how I was doing, so that was kind of like nice, Sean. That's D, nice. But, what do you? What's yeah. that mean? No, I know, I know. It was, it was nice. Um, but uh, no, I like Mean Sean. I, I just, it's funnier. Okay. It's, it's, it's. You know, you know, he's telling the truth. Like I, I don't want, I, I don't ever want to. Thinks um, he's telling the truth. Yeah, I, I don't want to wonder if somebody's sugarcoating stuff, and it's just like I'll do it when Sean's. That. When Sean's being mean, it's like you know he's being genuine. It's uh, it's it's uh, I like him. He's he's good people. Well, I'm a fan of the the not sugarcoating stuff. Uh, I don't. I definitely think he uh, does some things that are mean in just a bad way, but as being part of his uh, butt of the jokes a little bit. Uh, I, I people that like you know try to like be uh, condescending and. Um, yeah, he takes it ways. too far. I mean, yeah, he he yeah, takes yeah. it too far sometimes, for sure. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, is this bad boy side of yours going to come out? Maybe I'm sick of sh- nice Arya. Sick of nice <laughs> Josh Arya. Um, it just depends. I mean, it's it's not. 
it's not something it's not a character it's just it's something that when um you know in high stress it's just the competitor that comes out and it's not i'm not trying to be mean it's just uh like a situation comes up and and my competitive nature comes out um and you know i mean because you know how when you're like in the moment of a big event or a big spot and when you run deep into a tournament you feel almost invincible like you feel like i'm the shit not i'm the shit but like i'm really f-ing good and like i don't know it's it's just it comes it will come out i mean it definitely will come out in in a high stress situation where something happens and i'm sure that i'll say the wrong thing on camera or it'll it'll be taken in a certain way to some people and other people that know me know that you know it's i i don't mean any harm from it are you saying this is a good thing or a bad thing i think it's um I think it's a good thing for me because when I get, you know, when I get in the zone and, um, and you know, my thoughts start flowing and I, I feel like I've always risen, uh, I'm able to rise to occasions. Um, mm-hmm. and, and so when adrenaline is high, I feel like I'm better. Um, so yeah, I think for, for me, it's a good thing. And, you know, whatever happens, happens. Okay, I could see um, I could see positives and negatives to it. Um, I can definitely think see if like, yeah, I could definitely see if if uh, you know you get in the mo- moment where you're like making all the right reads and all of that, um, and you have like the confidence to make the right kind of plays. I can see that being a positive. I personally uh, am. When I, there are certainly times where I can get a little bit too trigger happy, I think. Um, But uh, in tournaments, that can be a good thing. Yeah. 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 Uh, But like my, my, like (laughs) my, when, when people are, the perception of me is to be of, of an asshole, like when that side of me comes out it's not fueled from anger for me. It's more, it's more fueled just from that competitive drive that I have. And, um, so I would feel like if it was, if it came out of anger, then yeah, it would, it would, um, be bad for me, but it's not. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I do think if you get too angry in this, it's entitled, it's uh, no good. Right. Um, did it come out at all when uh, you, um, uh, for some reason I had this image of you beating Phil Hellmuth at a final table, but I know you like edged him out at, as the player of the year in 2019. Did that mean anything to you? Did you, uh, did you get to battle with him a bit? Did you, the shit, he seems like a good uh, target for shit talking. Yeah, there was, there was, I, I do, there was one instance that came up, um, it was, it, we've never played a final table together, I don't believe, but we've definitely had some deep runs um, in the same events. And there was a, a mixed game tournament and it was a PLO hand where he had like a straight on the turn and I had like an open ender for a bigger straight and a flush draw. And I, I, I had a million outs and it's like a spot where anybody that knows PLO, you're definitely seeing the river. Um, well, I, there, after I, I I ended up winning the hand and I bet the river and he called and, um, under his breath, he calls me an ignorant moron (laughs) mother and, (laughs) and I just went with it and I jumped out of my seat and I called for the floor and I made this just big, situation out of it because anybody else would have gotten a penalty like the people you can't talk to people like that but and it didn't bother me but i acted like it really bothered me and um i i petitioned i tried to get him a penalty because 
it was like he had two big blinds. <laughs> he had two big blinds left, and it was like they had called four more hands for the night, and it was going to be his big blind and his small blind. And I tried my damnedest to get him a penalty, and they wouldn't give him one. And um, that was about as hard as we clashed. And I- I've had a lot of fun with Phil through the years. He's he's such um, an entertaining personality. Uh, you, his own, yeah, well, it's certain. He's got he's got some pluses for sure. Um, I you know I I I've I've learned to like Phil through the years. I used to be really, I used to really troll him um, because he's such an easy target. But, um, you know, you can't take away from, no matter if you look at the way, everybody critiques the way he plays, even me. Um, and it's, it's, it's strange. Uh, what he does is strange. How he's so successful is strange, um, but he is. But he and there is nobody is ever going to catch him in bracelets, um, and you know he's successful. And and that's what's cool about you know that's what's really cool about poker is you don't have to do it the same way as everybody else. And I'm a perfect example of that. Like. I've had a mild, uh, decent amount of success, and and I don't do it the same as everybody else. And I don't dwell on playing every single hand perfectly. I I make a lot of mistakes, but I do some good shit too at the same time. And and Phil just has to do some really good shit to put up the resume that he's put up. And that's all there is to it. He's he's got the most decorated resume of anybody he's not the best player but he's got the most decorated resume and hats off to him because he's doing something right that nobody can figure out all right uh, i've got a few thoughts on this subject so um yeah props to phil for all his success uh i actually think a lot of it is deserved although it's not so obvious why and i think a lot of online poker players miss this um and i think he is kind of an expiring an expiring um inspiring example in many ways because he also has some obvious faults so um first of all with this penalty situation if other people would get a penalty it would be fair if he got a penalty too he shouldn't really get fair unfair treatment so there's that i'm gonna put that out there um uh, also word on the street according to phil Helmuth's uh, mouth himself i have a story about this is that he's one of the best in the world at two and a half to do two big three big blinds <laughs> so, okay well, let, so, we, what, he can have that he can have that he can have that one um so i actually have a story about this is that we we're on the bubble with phil and he's got three big blinds and uh you know me and the other guy have a lot of chips so i'm like middle stack and the other guy has all the chips and so he announces, I'm one of the best in the world at two to three at this stack size. <laughs> and I say, what, at three big blinds, dude? And then the next hand, literally the next hand, he limps the small blind. And I'm like, what? And then the flop is, it goes check chalk. The flop is queen 10 8. He bets. The other guy moves all in. He folds. And the guy shows Jack 4 <laughs> offsuit. <laughs> I just can't oh. stop laughing at this point. That's <laughs> good. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like was... we don't understand it. But Phil, and did he cash? No, he did not. Um, oh, I did shit. not okay. bust my stack uh, when he had one and a half big blinds. I was smart yeah. enough for that one. Yeah, um, good job. Um, so uh, Phil, in my mind, has almost all the skills that a lot of the online poker players lack. To be honest, he has like all the soft skills. Uh, he has, I think, some of your observational skills that you're talking about. He knows, um, like, what a lot of uh, casual players are thinking. He's, like, pretty well in those guys' heads. And he has a style that if people, uh, you know, kind of... He does actually play the style that that um, that uh, theoretically isn't perfect, but if people, like, over uh, are over-aggressive against him, they can f*** themselves towards him because... Um, he does some things that uh, actually aren't that obvious to counter. And, like, if you are over-aggressive against a tight player in bad ways, that actually hangs yourself, even against limps. Like, limps are not that bad, actually, in theory, especially if, like, 
they're they're good if people, other people are going to raise. In fact, like why raise if other people are going to always raise your limp? Then you should just limp. That's the same thing as check. You check to the person who's betting. Um, and uh, another thing is that even in the context of GTO, it turns out there's a lot. Of, there's a number of alternative strategies that are close enough to GTO that they can actually be incorporated. So it's possible he's doing something that that works uh, in a way that just happens to. You know, he's found a way, he's like going, gone down this odd rabbit hole and just not a whole lot of players have the skill to counter it properly and people aren't close to GTO enough that they're really winning that much. Uh, he kind of yeah. like draws this big target to himself and a lot of people just fire and ultimately like trap themselves, I think, happens a decent yeah. amount of the time. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's spot on. I mean, it is, I mean, it's in, in letting people you know the perception of being weak uh and letting people being over, over over aggressive is definitely something that he's mastered and uh you know should be something that you know we all try to mix in i mean anything to to disrupt the sim you know anything to get people who play theoretically perfect you know a lot of these sims nobody runs a sim about when a guy limps, you know, a guy limps and, you know, it's, are, are all these multi-way pots, you know, it's, it's anything to get uh, a theoretically person, a theoretically perfect playing person to get oh. them to have to think outside the box. And I know that there's not a perfect person, but like anybody that just studies GTO all the time and, and just plays so many situations perfect because they, in poker, it's just a bunch of repetitive situations over and over. But, you know, Daniel and I talk about it a lot is, you know, you have to disrupt the sim. And, and, and I think Phil does a good job of that. Yeah, uh, I think that's a good, a good point. I think, um, I mean, I do want to emphasize, I think his soft skills have taken him far in, um, you know, just getting success in other kinds of ways that, that poker players don't think of and just, um, he's like, he's very active socially and, yeah. uh, you know, meets a lot of people and smart with his brand and like the things like that, like poker players don't have these skill sets at all. Actually, these were the ones that I wanted to learn. Um, right. And, uh, yeah, no, um, I mean, if you look in, if you look in Phil's Rolodex, I mean, if you look in his phone, he's probably got hundreds of billions of dollars in his contacts and, and all successful people. And, and I guarantee you that you know, I, I've I've made it a point in my life to every relationship that I have, I want to be able to grow in some certain way from it. I I, I try I, I try to surround myself with people that I respect and people that will make me. It it, it might be selfish in a way, but I try to gain something from every relationship that I have. And and uh, I think greedy Phil, bastard. yeah, <laughs> um, but. But Phil, I think Phil is similar in a way to where he surrounds himself with successful people. And, and I don't mean only financially. Um, I, I, it's, it's, you know, gaining something from people, it's not just financial gain. It's emotional gain. It's, it's learning how to deal psychologically with things. And, and I'm sure that, that he's really good at that and it's made him... Uh, a, a much more round, a, a much more rounded person. Sure. Well, I also think. Um, I mean, I think that to be honest, uh, that's at the root of all, you know, relationships in general. It's just like whatever is a true relationship is more based off of um, something that's lasts is is inside uh, versus something that's transient. A fake relationship is something that's transient. Uh, right. You know what I mean? There's a Transactional is the word, right. um, even though it doesn't always apply to money. It, it applies also to feelings that are transactional in my eyes, but uh, those are also transient. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, you know, from a friendship, you have to have some kind of connection. I mean, a connection has to do with your values and all that. I mean, you're still like getting something from someone. Right. Um, yeah, just I just not... um, like a long time ago, like back years ago, like my relationships were were based on interests of 
you know, doing bad things like going and gambling nonstop or partying and, and it sends you down like a really bad road. And, you know, when you're, when you're able to take a look at the people you're surrounding yourself with and, and you're realizing that, wow, I'm one of them and I'm, you know, it's, he's not, he's, that person is a bad influence, but at the same time, so am I. And so when you want to improve your, when I wanted to improve my life, I, I improved and, um, you know, mainly with the circle of people that I, that I ran around with. Yeah. I mean, that, that makes a lot of sense as well. I mean, you, you attract, become who you attract, right. uh, or you become who you hang out with it to some extent. Right. So there's always some kind right. of leakage. Right. Um, I do want to talk about this poker, uh, poker king thing, poker stick thing, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, especially when we're talking about, you know, um, like having relationships for selfish reasons. It seems like you've done something altruistic and I never viewed you to be, uh, I mean, <laughs> never viewed you to be a bad guy. Uh, yeah. You never well, seem to give me that impression. I mean, I mean, I'm not saying that you are. I'm just saying yeah. uh, you seem to be doing things that uh, actually I've seen you extend quite a bit of generosity in various different ways, not necessarily financially. Yeah, no, with, uh, so I got offered, uh, in, in, in 2021, um, you know, COVID was ending and I didn't really feel like, uh, my volume of poker was going to be high, but I always knew that I would be in the poker world in some way. And I offered a position to take over at pocket fives and run the staking division, you know, because I've been on both sides of it. Like I've gotten staked and I stake and I take pieces of people all the time. Um, so I thought it would be really interesting. And it evolved from that because I was able to, um, you know, the poker world needs outside money that can never get into the casino. So like there's the crushers who are always going to take money out of poker and then there's going to be the whales that are like they have jobs and they bring money into poker. But there's the middle class of poker that just is stuck there and they're not able to raise uh, they're not able to, to play higher limits. And this is an opportunity to to I saw it as an opportunity to to bring more money in and to get these people playing, because as a poker player, all we do is take, take, take like our job is to go beat somebody and leave him looking at the ground with his chin on his chest. And, and this is just an opportunity to, to help other guys, you know, that, that they want to play a one K, but they're usually, they can afford a $400 tournament, you know, and, and there's people out there that, that love the action and love sweating. And so I've, I've built it up pretty good with the help of Daniel Negreanu. Um, and, and yeah, oh, nice. it's, I didn't know he was helping with that. Cool. Well, the way he helps is, you know, he's got the biggest social presence. And and so when he when he, you know, shines a light on poker stake or when he puts you know, he doesn't have to sell, but he gives me 25 percent of his World Series of poker every year. And he gives me 25 percent of of his super high roller bowl to sell to his fans. And and that alone has you know, made the company, uh, uh, made poker stake what it is along with the other people. And, and I'm not, and I'm not saying that only Daniel did it, but we have a full resume of, of great, great players that, that are, are wanting to give back and wanting to, to help, um, engage their fans and engage all poker fans around the world. And, uh, it's, it's been, it's been fun to coordinate it. And I've made new friends with players and, um, yeah, it's been cool. It's, uh, you know, the most recent, I think, uh, yesterday, Chino or two days ago, Chino was at the final table of the hundred K PLO and he sold like 4% on the site. And so, uh, I think, I think he oh, had, nice. <laughs> yeah, he had like 50 well, uh, people. Chino's, invest Chino's, uh, Chino's coming back, man. Chino is Chino is really Chino's turned his back. life around. I've oh, known wow. Chino for a long time. Um, we had connections in Atlanta through the years, and so I got to know him pretty early back in the Poker Stars days. 
back in the early, early 2000s. And, um, you know, I've seen, I've seen his downfall. I've seen his bad times. And it it's really makes me happy to see uh, the person that Chino's turning into. Oh, that is cool. It makes me happy, yeah. too. It almost brings a tear to my eye, actually. <laughs> um, holding back a tear. I don't know if you can yeah. tell. Yeah, get, get um, some tissue. Cute. I don't know if I would cry on my podcast. Um, There's nothing wrong with so, crying, uh, man. Hmm? There's nothing wrong with crying. It's I. It's. I mean, I know we're joking about <laughs> it now, but it's yeah. It's. I don't know. That's just a old story. Well, um, part of the message of the whole podcast that I'm trying to help communicate is that by helping uh, each other, you we ultimately help ourselves. Actually, it ultimately is, in fact. A selfish thing because if somehow you know the community can come together and support each other because everyone has different uh, strengths and all that they can find ways of supporting each other toward to towards creating greater than zero sum possibilities or at least or no put it another way uh, creating um, possibilities that uh, can be beneficial towards everyone uh, in a bigger way and uh, so I happen to appreciate the uh, the mission of pokerstake.com actually I, i'll support it more in fact um i appreciate so it yeah you sold for uh, yeah you sold for the ppc last year and i appreciate that. yeah yeah i didn't win i, I thought uh i thought fate was afoot but apparently not uh fate was <laughs> had something else in store for me but whatever yeah. um it's cool uh and yeah it's inspiring that you're doing this uh i um we only have a second left but i want to ask has it have you actually seen any of the benefits of uh, doing this so far, um, hopefully it's making you, you know, at least uh, I would think I would think it's at least uh, giving you a better name in the community. Like you're doing something that's good for a lot of people, and hopefully making some money out of it. How's it going? Yeah, it's it's definitely it definitely keeps me tied in to more poker, and it keeps me more interested in poker. Like if one of the people selling are at a final table, I'll watch, and then. You know, I'll see hand histories and I'll learn. Whereas before, I was totally disengaged from any poker unless I was playing or one of my close friends are playing. But yeah, this it, it keeps me somewhat dialed in. And, you know, all these people that, that are posting, they're all really good players and and people that I'm able to listen to and, and hear ideas from. And, you know, I learn... Um, I, I always try to learn in every, learn something from every situation that I'm in. Um, and it, it just gives me, you know, more avenues to learn. And, and it's, it's definitely, I mean, you can look at, I mean, I've been playing poker professionally for 24 years now. And arguably the last three years, of my career are by far my best and it, it's definitely correlated with the work I'm doing at poker stake and correlated with you know the place that my life is and um, so yeah it's uh, it's definitely helped me and and I uh, I feel good about the work that I've done there awesome uh, well I hope it continues to benefit you I'll, I'll support you uh, hopefully I appreciate bring you, some more traction to the, the site and all that for sure uh, but we've got to go uh, pokerstake.com guys if you want to sell some action there or if you're trying to play a little bit higher um, matter of fact uh, maybe my just my community can help you that I'm building uh, I'm trying to help lower to middle stakes players have sustainable jobs uh, among other things but um, we'll see anyway but thank you for your time Josh Aria uh, and it's been great having you cool I appreciate you jungle 